G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Friday afternoon here in Australia, market up ever so slightly, the tiniest little bit, but still stuck under $2 trillion. And look, something very interesting happening on the charts, and today I'm going to give you the bullish case and the bearish case, because I think that's only fair, because at the moment there's definitely things that are looking bullish, but there's also things that are looking bearish as well, and we need to keep that in mind. But look, 1.95 trillion, so again, just under that $2 trillion mark, having trouble getting back over it. It really is resistance at the moment, as opposed to support that it was for a while. BTC dominance, 42%, kind of just hovering. BTC price, just under 44000 uh, It has been up a little bit higher, but it's also been down lower, and gas prices are quite low, which is nice. Now again, we can see it's a bit of a mixed board. Yesterday it was nice and green, now we got a bit of everything. What are we going to face tomorrow with the weekend uh, upon us? Are we going to, you know, are we now back to weekend dumps and, you know, pumping through the week? Or, you know, where are we at the moment? We'll have to have a look and see what is kind of happening. But look, what's done the best in the last 24 hours then? We know there's always going to be something that's done well. All right, OMG Network just on an absolute tear, 20%. Quantum, Tezos, VeChain. But look, a lot of these coins were actually down yesterday as well. So it really is up one day, down the next, and kind of all over the place. Uniswap having a little bit of a pump there. But look, a couple of nice double-digit moves. And then we are really into just a couple of, you know, one or two kind of reasonable, reasonably high single-digit moves. And then just lots of low single-digit moves. Losses. What hasn't fared so well in the last 24 hours? DYDX, again, had a really big pump, so kind of to be expected. Uh, Xfin Network, Perp, uh, Avalanche. Again, these are all coins that have had pumps in the last few days, so now they are down. Again, a really choppy market at the moment. And again, it's generally been sort of traveling down, uh, depending on which altcoins you're in. Some have been doing all right. But yeah, a lot of sideways movement. I, I suppose, actually... A lot of the altcoins have traveled up slightly, but that may change very soon. Look, let's just get over there. Let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart. This is what we're looking at. And we need to really focus in on here. Look where Bitcoin is. It is currently sitting right on this resistance line. And this little kind of spinning top uh, candlestick will be red one minute, then green the next, then red, then green, then red, then green. It's really just fighting at the moment right on here. Now, it is definitely possible that it gets rejected. And then again, maybe we have to come back down and retest this kind of 40500 ish dollar level. That's where we've really been bouncing off again. We dip down a little bit low there, but look, support, 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 support. So this really is the mark. Is this going to get rejected and come down, or are we finally going to get a breakout? Now, if we get a breakout, what wouldn't be surprised if... if it's a bit of a fake out, and then we come back down below, maybe come back again, come back down and test here. We get a clear breakout for a day or two, and then it's going to roll over and mostly come back down and retest this line as support. That's what I think is most likely going to happen if we break out. We don't get too far. Again, we maybe get up to around about kind of 44, uh, let's say sort of 45,000. We'll then roll over, come back down, retest this line in the next sort of few days. So again, maybe the next week or so, and then bounce off it and then hopefully go higher. Now that's what I'm kind of expecting to happen, but it's not guaranteed yet. And again, even if we do, we've got to get through these three. So we've got to get through 45. We've got to get through uh, sort of 49-ish thousand, you know, you can say 48,000, and then we need to get through 50 sort of two and a half thousand before i'm really going to start to get too bullish even if we start to go through these but then we roll over around about here then we are still in a possibility of a dead cat bounce now what i found interesting though is what i was looking at actually i'll, I'll wait till i get to the next chart so that's where we are with bitcoin still in this falling wedge fighting that uh, resistance con or trend line at the moment can we break out or do we simply get rejected and come back down right some bullish cases so the Fed have come out this is Jeremy Powell Jeremy 
Powell, sorry, has straight up said that he doesn't plan on banning Bitcoin or even cryptocurrencies. He wants to regulate them and obviously go after, you know, the scammy ones and things like that. But he said he doesn't plan on banning Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies. He's actually said cryptocurrencies. It wasn't just Bitcoin. Now, what do we know about politicians, though? They can say one thing and 100% mean the other. And he may be meaning that, no, we're not going to ban cryptocurrencies, but we are going to regulate the absolute crap out of them. So it's hard to know exactly, you know, where this stands, but it does sound a little bit bullish. They don't want to ban it. And they don't want to be like China and, you know, restrict their citizens from investing in something that may be able to really change their lives. Because let's say cryptocurrency really takes off and it's just this massive thing. Do you really think the government's going to miss out on it? No, nah, they'll get their taxes, they'll make sure they have everything lined up and they will make plenty of money from that. It's just that old financial system will really struggle and so they'll be quickly trying to find their way over and stocks and things will have to change, new regulations will most likely be have to made and things will have to be made, sorry. And again, like I said uh, almost every day for a while now, I believe that's the better way to go. I don't think we should be trying to fit cryptocurrencies into old regulations. We need to be putting them into new regulations. And I have an interesting story coming up. But Jeremy Powell has come out and said he doesn't want to ban crypto. So for me, that's actually bullish. Or at least it's, it's bullish on the outside. We'll have to wait and see. We go to Australia, my hometown. So new Australian crypto legislation likely in 2020, uh, says Senator Braggs. Uh, he tells NFT Fest. Now he said some really interesting things. He's also backed plans to run the sector on renewable energy as part of the government's yet to be established goal of achieving net zero carbon emissions. It'd be really good for Australia to get, you know, full green. I like that. It's not that easy. You know, coal's a really big thing for us, iron ore and all the rest of it. But for us to get uh, net zero in carbon emissions, that would be great. Now, what he's also come out and said is he plans to publish uh, the report by the end of October. So we're in October now. We've just started it here in Australia, the first, which will include regulatory recommend recommendations that can be legislated over the next 12 months. So it's not something that, bang, it just happens like that. They can slowly implement it, you know, give everywhere at time, uh, to you know, get ready for the changes and things like that. Now the review is due to conclude in about three weeks from now. And the promise that I made to you, I will keep. We will give you a plan and that plan will be designed to put Australia at the front end of the digital asset society and the world. I love this. Now this is just one senator saying it. This is not the government jumping on board uh, and adopting it, all the rest of it. But this is what I've hoped for. I hope Australia gets on the front foot of this and can see what is happening and what is coming. You know, Australia, we're, we're still, we're not a developing nation, but we're one of the smaller, kind. you know, we're in the G20, but we're not in the, what is it, the G10 or the G8 or whatever it is. So we're still outside of that. But we have a big landmass. So really, you know, we should still be able to get up there. Not that it's simply based on landmass, there's a lot more to it. But I'd love for Australia to move up the ranks and I really do think cryptocurrency uh, is the way we can do it. Become a bigger player on the world stage. Now we go down here. Robust policy framework focuses, and this is from the one he's going to put forward, Senator Bragg, is focused on three objectives. Consumer protection. We absolutely do want that. Investor promotion. So they want to promote investors, you know, get people to come into the market and have the market are competitive, a competitive market. Absolutely, I love what this uh, guy is on about already. We're still yet to see exactly what it is. There's no specifics, but it already feels like he's going in the right direction. But again, politicians, quite often they can say one thing and mean another. So we're yet to see. We've got three weeks. The end of sort of October is when he'll come out with it. And again, it's still, it's not the entire government saying we're getting on board. This is one senator coming out with something. Whether they adopt it completely, partially or completely blow it off, we'll have to wait and see. 
Now, he's also stated that he is very conscious about not wanting to stifle innovation in crypto via regulation that suits the incumbent vested interests who want to see the sector destroyed by a regulation that was designed for a whole different purpose. Again, Senator Bragg, I am loving what you're saying. I just hope you're going to you know, back it up with real words. And then the other issue is we need the government to get on board. But he's saying, you know, the old financial system they want to see this destroyed and the regulations that we currently have were designed for a whole different purpose their regulations the same in australia from many many years ago they don't suit cryptocurrencies we need new regulation so it's not just the states that need new regulation we need it here in australia we need it worldwide we need new laws built around this new system we need all the governments and you know politicians and bankers and that they need to accept that things are changing. The system we have has not been fair. You've had, you know, you've had your time where you've made yourself filthy, filthy rich and could control everything. It's time to move away from that. We need a world that will look after, you know, everyone. It's going to be hard to look after everyone. There's always someone who's not quite so well looked after. But no more of this walled garden where just the rich stay rich and the poor stay poor. We need an open free market with one set of rules for everybody. No more of this, oh, you've got to be a credited investor and have a million, you know, a minimum of two million to get into these things. That is what keeps the poor poor. And they just sell this silly song that, oh, but, you know, rich people, they can afford to lose money. No one can afford to lose money. Straight up. Rich people live like they're rich. They don't live like they're poor. You know, there's the Scrooges and that's how they got rich and they're, they are still a sort of select few. But the more money you earn, the more money you spend. That's generally just the way it goes. So, you know, for that kind of, you know, sentiment that, oh, you know, they can afford to lose money. No one can afford to lose money. Will it destroy them if they lose a little bit of money? No, but they can't afford to because then they're no longer as rich as what they were. I, again, I think we need protection, cause consumer protection and things like that. But we can't have, you know, these set of rules for the fil you know, for the. I, don't, I was about to say filthy rich. They're not filthy, but the rich to be able to get into all these early things. Yeah, it's risky, but you know, hopefully they've done their homework and then they make the exponential gains. While the poor old workers, they get to come on at the back end and get their, you know, one two percent gains compared to the, you know monstrous gains particularly in crypto you know ten hundred thousands of x's everybody deserves uh, to have a chance of that kind of stuff so senator bragg andrew bragg i will be following you i'm about to go and get on your twitter and i will be following you and i hope that you can you know bring some really good regulation to australia because if it's really good the rest of the world can have a look at it and adopt it not, not exactly, but something similar. They might be able to look at it and go, you know what, that actually looks really good. I want to get on board with that. We're going to make similar laws here in, you know, Afghanistan, you know, UK, America, Portugal, wherever it may be. But obviously, if it's crap and no good uh, and the government doesn't want to get on the back of it either, then it could obviously go nowhere. But Senator Bragg, love what you're doing. Hopefully, you're going to come through and yeah help this industry which again i don't understand governments trying to fight it i understand all the, because they're really entrenched in you know old finance and all the rest of it but you can change everyone can change you've just got to want to and be able to so anyway i'm getting on a bit of a tangent there all right cardano are going to receive a hundred million from Emergo to develop DeFi and NFTs. Now Emergo is a, an arm of Cardano, but they're going to put a hundred million dollars towards developing this space. So the investment vehicle aims to invest in early startup and growth stage companies focused on building socially impactful solutions powered by Cardano. This uh, will compromise two separate entities from their own investment thesis, Emergo Africa, and we know Cardano is getting really big over in Africa, and Emergo Ventures. So big money being spent on Cardano, again, looking at DeFi and NFTs and things like that. So it does show that you know Cardano is not simply just going for a couple of smart contracts and that's it. They have a bigger plan. And again, you know, going into countries like Africa and who knows where else they're doing deals around the world as well. So I, again, this seems really bullish. 
So bullish news here, bullish news here, a possibly sort of bullish pattern uh, with Bitcoin. We'll have to wait and see. This definitely still could be bearish. Ethereum. Now, again, this is Ethereum and this is uh, on the daily. And again, I've run this line through the middle where I'm trying to get the most touch points. So this gives us the average sort of fair price of uh, Ethereum to date. Now, again, this isn't exact, but it's funny how there's lots of support and resistance there. It becomes resistance there. Support, 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 resistance, resistance, support, support, resistance. Anyway, we've run it through here. But if we have a look, this says to me that Ethereum is undervalued at the moment. It's cheap. Its average value should be actually quite high, up around the $3,900, $4,000 level. And what do we know about uh, Ethereum since its kind of inception back in 2015? It's spent a whole lot more time above this line than it has below this line. And when it's been above the line, it's been quite high above the line, as opposed to when it's been below the line. Don't get me wrong, that really hurts. But generally, it's not that far under the line. So it says to me that the upside is massive, but it's not to say that this can't roll over. So this chart to me looks bullish. But now we go over to Bitcoin. This is Bitcoin since 2015. So this hasn't got 2013 and all the rest of it into it. But this could mean that it's a little bit bearish for Bitcoin. As we can see, this has been the average price. We run this line through the middle where it has the most touch points. This is where it's got the most. Now, again, some people, you know, will move these lines around a bit and go, oh, no, I think you get more touch points here. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Either way, let's, you know, run it through there. This shows the Bitcoin is not at its fair price. And it doesn't mean it has to stay there. It absolutely could go higher, but maybe... This has to go lower. Now, what I'm seeing here is because this wasn't a blow off top. I think this pattern here looks very similar to this. Every other time, Bitcoin has generally sort of had a blow off top. Blow off top, blow off top, blow off top. Not quite a blow off top there, but blow off top. A sort of blow off top, blow off top, sort of blow off top. It always had these big obvious corrections, except here back in 2019. Look at this. Kind of rolled over, dipped rolled over again so we've rolled over dipped rolled over again so this is looking a lot like this and this may simply be bitcoin's going to roll over come back down to around 30 ish thousand dollars and again i'm not saying it's going to happen i don't offer you financial advice and then maybe travel sideways for a while until next year before it then starts to make another move upwards so this is looking very suspicious at the moment and it could possibly be this now no guarantees in life again I'm not saying that's what it is but they do look similar again they're not exactly the same but they often rhyme and this feels like this at the moment so definitely something to keep an eye out for again we come down probably test somewhere around 30,000 maybe travel sideways for a number of months until sort of January next year before we then start to have another move up now that's only if this plays out i don't think that's what's going to happen but it is something that we need to keep in mind so that is bearish so i wanted to give you both sides uh of the of the coiners that say the, there's bullish news out there and there's things that look bullish but there's also things that look bearish all right that's it from me stay safe be kind to one another congratulations to you if you're on that gain train and i'll see you next time